Hello, fellow humans. So my name is Vanessa Rosa. A little bit about my background. I started my life doing, um, well, my art life doing street art, and I was just traveling everywhere, doing paintings, working with NGOs, doing kind of grassroots, and then I discovered laser cutting, and everything changed for me. I started doing this um, stencils of uh, tiles in perspective, mixing Portuguese styles, because we have a lot of them in Brazil and from Rio de Janeiro, with um, Islamic and Chinese, and, and that's what got me to travel and, and get invited to do projects all over the world, and then I started collaborating with a generative artists, and here is a, a project, Wen Chi Li, in which we went deeper into algorithm image. I went from the patterns into uh, the logic of them, like why, uh, like how they were geometric algorithms on, on their own, and that got me into creative coding. So this image is actually my first um, collaboration with Jean. Here's another collaboration with Chi Lee. And, and doing this merge of projection mapping with uh, algorithmic image, then I got then <coughs> studying worldwide patterns and Afro-mathematics, and then I was living with uh, an indigenous groups in Brazil for a month doing their path, like just seeing how they had these living traditions of um, just painting geometric patterns, and that was sacred art for them. And we went from that to a you know, long, long story. And on the side, I also I've made a publishing company with my family, and I was closely focused on creating uh, illustrated children's books. And But I bring that up because that really brought me deep into the storytelling world, but also into knowing like how to organize a, a story as a series and launch it, etc. So that was my background until I got to Mars College, which is this education program, research and development lab, and off grid community, and then again into cultivating a low cost, high tech lifestyle, which was founded by Jean Copen, who's going to speak right after me, and Philip Murray. Jean's the one Ralph Yin, he's my, my life partner and love. And Jean is a big figure in AI, so. Mars is very focused on AI. It feels like we are living in a sci-fi world already. We play, uh, we use a lot of electric unicycles, we have crazy parties, it's all about fan life. It's like this idea that if our technology could one day leash Mars, it could also help us live better on places on Earth than our heart. Like, that's it. And how to do it cheap, how to also think about different models of education, which we had all these people from the internet. And just make it happen, uh, make a pop-up city for three months. So this is uh, the last uh, sensation of Worms. Um, you a little bit some of our, of our team. But the first year of Mars in 2020 was also when the pandemic hit, so it, it, it made it feel even more like we, I, I was already living a sci-fi world. And instead of um, going to AI, I decided to go into the most traditional art making possible. I started Gathering yeah, local clay and making these ceramic heads just by digging up over this in pointed brown skin and buying them. And at first, I really didn't know what was the story. And uh, what I'm going to play right after this is one of the latest animations of one of the Billion Martians characters, in which I explain quite well how this, how this world building evolved in the last five years. So, can you hear the light haze? <laughs> Without a new one cannot truly 
just on outside. This uh, animation is now in film festivals. It actually got selected in Japan so far. I haven't updated the poster. It got two awards. So it's kind of cool because like, I didn't use to do films at all. And now with AI and the making animations, which is such a labor intensive work, it becomes so much more accessible. Uh, and who are the little Martians? I'm still evolving this. Every time it's a little bit better. But the idea is that they are seeds of life. And they adapt to environments, and they're trying to just um, reuse Earth's knowledge. They are mix of humans and genetic data from all of our species to see whatever knowledge Earth has, or they have acquired along the way, how they can flourish life in where they are. So they can harvest their own energy, they do um, photosynthesis, but they're also on their, on their ways of uh, creating energy that we know even from life forms on Earth, uh, even from radiation. And at the same time, they communicate through an imaginary, which is a network of simulations that connect all the portions. And in this simulation, they hold memories and imagination from Earth. So everything that we know, supposedly, like the human imaginary, is a part of the little arts and simulations that we can't understand. So that's like also becomes a cool exercise of world building, in which we imagine this being much, much of in the future, and they think that they are actually the ones creating our reality. Um, and I'm getting this sound out here. And then they started even looking for other inspirations, like the Kodamas in Japan, um, Ibi for sure, and um, the maze gods from, from the Mayas, like these beautiful spirits, like earthly spirits. So the idea that maybe these futuristic beings are also part of our past. They are these infrastructure level beings of the simulation that we are living. Um, so I'm a little bit about the process. So I made the ceramics uh, by hand initially, and then 
I made silicone molds for them. And then I can create as many clones as I like. And bisque fire them, pop it almost ceramic process, decorate them, and you make a variety of ceramics. And here you see that uh, this comes from the same mold, but then as it's still clay, I can just keep editing them. And that's how I make many different versions of the carrying or turn them into my things. And then I, uh, I can do um, 3D scanning, so mostly photogrammetry, but I use all techniques possible. Uh, and a lot of the other techniques for animation. So I use a lot of the video auditor face, it's a better model that does spatial animation directly from audio, and that just makes the process way, way faster. And now, like more recently, we started to also have LoRa training in which I can take some of photos with ceramics, use a LoRa concept, and then the image on the right, uh, on the other side, work the stable diffusion output. So it's like fine tuning stable diffusion. And I'm doing all of this with edit.art, which means so I'm explaining a little bit more. And then I write prompts for the characters, I rewrite their back story. Uh, and then they become boss that you can interact with, and then you Suno or audio for the audio so that I could just close the lyrics and give different styles for, for, this, for the music. And then video editing, and there's tons of information more on the website if anyone's work uh, is used to know more. So there's a page just of Dallas explaining who the character is, uh, their physical reality, and and uh, what is our role of thinking of English narrative? So here, it's a photo of Bordellus. Again, Bordellus is just outside uh, as a real sculptor. Um, some of the images that I use <laughs> as initial image for for the physical reality. So I really enjoy creating the image as a background and then applying the lower models on them. That gives me way more control with their aesthetics. If I can from the image first, either on the internet, on the journey, or whatever other um, who I prefer, then I can apply um, the concept, but keep the aesthetics that I have already decided. I can even make a drawing myself or take a photo and apply my care. Uh, here you can imagine, like in the case of Rebellance, you will see tons of anonymous Bosch, Goya I also use for, uh, for the video. And, and it's a little bit of a spray of uh, paintings and uh, sculptures, there are like traces of consciousness of pre previous generations. So if you have a simulation, you can use them as, as like a portal to, to that time. Um, and here is like some applications of Redellus within the Garden of Berkeley Delights from, from the Anonymous Bosch and the Brugger. So I'm also working now on the children's clothes with the same character. This is just one of the first uh, layouts of how it's going to be. And it's, I'm, I'm really excited about like, how I can make a story for grown-ups and then make a version for kids. And I think we really need sci-fi for kids. We need to think of this new generation that is coming. It's like, how are, uh, how are they going to think about AI or think about the future in a future we would like to live in? And I'm excited about these characters that living in this future would care about us and might be able to share some of their knowledge with us. And it is also like not so human centric. Even if they carry human consciousness, they also go beyond us. And then we have the other characters. So I've been uh, mostly focused on the six characters for now. I don't have so much development as to well done video of them. Um, I made music for them and the music is mostly just like a hint of their personality, like a, a hint of what they need. And my idea is that each of the workshops should have a different approach to life. If Bordella is a very caring, nurturing little martial artist, so that apologize for our suffering, uh, Mikos, who I'm going to show right away, like, doesn't pick up that at all. So, blame Mikos, sorry. Oh, sorry, I have to put my sound back again. I spend my time spreading spores, 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 so many spores. If one in a million, just one little spore, if one survives, if one ever thrives, then it's Eureka, Eureka, we won the whole game. Eureka, Eureka. Life is a number.
that we got asked to shoot yesterday or before yesterday. So uh, some of this footage was just not with um, Alina's model. So it even still has a watermark. And it's just so fun how this game is constantly changing. Like some things that would be ages to do an animation one year ago. Now it's like you generate straight from one image. Uh, this project has been featured in the Nvidia AI art gallery, mostly because of my usage of their model um, on YouTube face. And that has been a really interesting conversation too, because they kind of need fine artists, like people with traditional art background, to be using AI and also seeing like, hey, how can we integrate all these people, like the art maybe like making visible things or drawing into this new world. And that's something that I'm, of course, very much passionate about, because I saw some I like working with illustrators and painting, and I mean, that's just what I'm glad to do. And I want to be able to, had more people that have that or similar to be like also falling in love with AI, still yes, like now we can be a world builder, what a you can do animations, if you do metaverse, there's so much to explore, so many low hanging fruits in the eyes. So this is a metaverse that I built Arium. So Arium was kind of discontinued. Uh, but the cool thing here is that the architecture was also ceramics and then kind of tiny like um, objects. Uh, they're kind of, they, they were like this size, but when in, in the metaverse they can be gigantic, so there was something magic to that. That's something that I enjoy a lot thinking about, how um, in ancient times they would go to a temple and have a sculpture that they would use as an objectification of a game that existed in, um, in the virtual world, in a digital, in, not a digital, but in another dimension. And it's kind of fun that with the AI actors, they can play a little bit with that concept again, which I made up and um, I scope well uh, an architecture or a camper, and they, they could be potentially alive. They could be agents within assimilation. So this is another metaphor that we built. Uh, this one, this space is actually is we scan of real environment. This is a fortress in Portugal. And which is also really cool just to think about memories, how like, you can um, preserve the start of your advisor, like do all sort of digital twins and like uh, and apply all these characters to be living there. Um, so another thing that I'm kind of interested in playing with again is integrating like Euro abilities with uh, with the characters. Uh, so that's something I want to go back to, but we'll have a time. And then I also have the shows, how to display them. And I think like each one should have their own little pubs, play also with direction mapping uh, on them. So maybe more this integration this digital. Uh, we have this interactive story learning experiment that runs on Eden, and then I invite everybody to participate. You should do an Eden account, hit create then go to the coaching model, and then you can choose between the six characters that I presented, the kind of story you want, if it is physical reality or even imaginary, in the chair, and then aspect ratio, and then the key thing is like answering like what is happening to the character. And uh, I just put like talk to the character about consciousness, and then you get an image of the character with the aesthetics that I just um, decided for that memory. This one was like playing with Joshua. Right, his name wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, just like a little Russian is only two music case of cautiousness. And that makes me really excited and like interactive storytelling, all the things can do. 
And there is more to this project. I'll be thinking about uploaded lines and I'll send to the little book humans, like all these other characters that are gonna be inhabiting the simulation that is uh, led or well, at least the infrastructure is like organized, created by this being's Homer washes. And now uh, I pass to the chief, who is my deepest inspiration for this, for all of this. Uh, he's the one who got me into loving AI and creator for his college and also do cleaning and AI art. And he studied applied mathematics in Colombia and has been working with machine writing since what? Up in the Basically. Um, I, oh, wow, well, I guess you. It's funny that I don't use this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and it is you. I'm just I'm gonna go kind of quickly, I'm just gonna make a note as it is. Um, just uh, like a quick bit about me and how I, how I got into this, uh, kind of took a roundabout way to do what I do. Um, I started my career of machine learning, do research and recommendation out there, some stuff in music. Machine learning was very kind of a uh, little boring at the time. It was very theoretical, um, and I got an argumentalist. And so um, over time, I started to branch out, try to do uh, generative marks and bring it in to uh, use this. Oh, okay. It looks. Um, and um, long story short, I, I was kind of in the right place at the right time when. Uh, it's like deep dream and GANs and uh, just the first neural networks that could produce images uh, started to arrive. The thing that would left here is like, uh, and it's just uh, some of the first faces that I was able to make using GANs and autocoders. I've had kind of uh, like a far grow seat to this guild as as um, as has gone from this to, to this. Uh, and uh, for a long time, I uh, compiled this resource for artists to get into machine learning. It's like a toolkit full of, it was like, a, there's a, a book about neural networks and how they work, and a bunch of uh, resources like code and tutorials and some classes that I already bought. Uh, just getting uh, interested people in the creative coding world uh, that I was able to be interested in machine learning. Um, and so uh, I did. Lots and lots of workshops. I think um, uh, over over since 2010, I've had over a hundred of these, just like full time job for a while, and um, I've been doing less of those since since 2020. Uh, but they, well, they're, they're sort of how how many of this stuff came to be. Um, I'm really into simulations. I feel simulations. It's, it's so amazing. Actually, the you know I hear Philip talks about back in life. I feel like there's a revival happened in those simulations. I want to say the first ones were really in the in the eighties when artificial life was a thing. I was really into SimCity and Sim Earth. Maybe some of you remember from the early days as a kid. I also used to play like gay sports games and I would I was a big hockey fan, had an NHL one five at home, but I would um, kind of watch the AIs play against each other on stage tournaments as a real kid. Uh, yeah, this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, it's it's really, really now in the, because I think of AI agents that talk about making simulations, multi-agent simulations is um, really leading up. So maybe some people saw this like generative agents paper where they took a bunch of agents, they put them on a little 2D grid together uh, so that they could uh, have, you know, basically a little life together, they plant birthday parties for each other, ethical interactions. Uh, there's also stuff that I'm really interested in, like uh, maybe some people have seen World Sim by, by this research, or just kind of this like, almost like a, a game inside of a, inside of a shell, like a terminal. And then Web Sim, which is uh, basically it's like simulating the internet. So instead of going to an actual website, you put what you want into the URL and then we'll generate the website on, on the spot. So this was a just for all the uh, Getting uh, back to agents, a few years ago, I started really thinking about autonomous agents and I got this idea in my events make what I call an autonomous artificial artist. I even wrote a paper about it in the RX 2018 or 19, something like that, uh, where I proposed this idea of what an autonomous, what it meant to be autonomous, um, kind of, uh, 
because uh, I came into decentralization, and then um, uh, and then basically, well, it was, it was sort of a very machine, very AI-driven project with with this kind of crypto influx. Uh, it's a little bit of a just a work in progress. I've been working on Abraham for uh, for every help basically, uh, but now Abraham kind of lives on Eden. So um, uh, on Eden, which which Vanessa mentions, you can generate. You can create characters on Eden where you figure their personality, and then Abraham is making some kind of a story every couple of hours. It's just on, on autoplay and making a little story in a series of us. Very primitive. It's sort of something that I, I have a lot of ideas for, you know, sort of dynamic story creation. Um, so, so another thing you can do with these characters is make them talk to each other. So here I've created two characters, Orion Blackwood, Amara Ersley is all she generated. It's kind of like well, cliche. They have personalities, they have voices, and then I put them, I, you know, I make something up like debate the best way of making pancakes in the desert, and then they, they just talk to each other. Pancakes out here in the desert? Ever thought that culinary arts would become part of my repertoire, Elara? But the desert does have its charms for such an endeavor, I suppose. Have you ventured into this particular gastronomic experiment yourself? I found that the desert presents a unique set of challenges, but also opportunities. The key is adapting to the environment. For instance, the intense heat during the day could be harnessed if you have the right setup. Indeed. Adapting is what separates Shogun from a sh- It just a little bit like a snap, <laughs> uh, So I thought uh, I, would, I would try to close with a, um, a commercial that was generated on Eden today for Edge Esmeralda. So I, I, I hope that uh, in this how you know how every work comes back next year. So this sort of prom did I, I put in the, the founders of Esmeralda and um, and Edge City and then I and then I basically just ask, you know, one frog, please make a commercial for Edge Esmeralda. So here it is. A fusion of imagination and reality, Edge Esmeralda is where the pioneers of tomorrow converge to shape a world of progress and wonder. Esmeralda isn't just a place, it's a movement. Here, we build the foundations of a future that flourishes with innovation and purpose. Imagine a society incubator, a lab where every corner holds a new idea, every face, an ally and adventure. That's the heart of Edge Esmeralda. Edge Esmeralda bridges the gap between the digital and physical, community and the individual, creating a symphony of collaboration. We are spearheading a cultural evolution where the language of Web3 empowers each of us to architect our shared destiny. Join us as we lay the cornerstone for a future engraved with the hallmarks of sustainability, education, and boundless creativity. Bring your ideas, your passions, your dreams. At Edge Esmeralda, you plant the seeds that will grow into tomorrow's innovations. Together, we're more than just architects. We're the curators of joy, the champions of a brighter, more playful future. Edge Esmeralda is not just a village, it's the dawn of a visionary era. We be part of the Genesis.